People ask me, you know, we get really confused about this whole issue of calcified plaque. One thing that'll happen is I'll get people come in with a calcium score of 100. They might be obese, they might get started with us, we might find significant prediabetes or even diabetes. They get focused, they drop their carbs, they lose 30 pounds, and they expect to do another calcium score and at least have 100 or maybe even reverse that. And then they'll turn around and instead of reversing it, they'll have an increase up to 400 or 600 or more. I had a patient just a few weeks ago who went from 300 when he first saw me, did all of that stuff, lost over 40 pounds, dropped his blood pressure, had to go off of blood pressure medications, all the right stuff. But instead of having a decrease on that 300 of calcium, he had an increase. And it was like, oh my God, are you sure we did the right thing? And it's, you know, he's fine now. He understands where he is, but it's just something that takes people a little bit of time to work through because they've heard this. If you've heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times. And I'm sure both of you've heard it. Increased calcium score means increased risk. So why, Brewer, would you want to get people increase their calcium? Well, here's the thing. When you've got acute, hot, liquid plaque, it's full of liquid, it's full of immune cells. Your immune cells are attacking the plaque. And when you stabilize it, you pull that liquid out, you pull the immune cells out, they're no longer attacking the plaque, but it's sort of like a cut on your arm or in your skin. When you heal, cuts, sometimes they calcify. And that's exactly what happens with these. If you don't believe it, here's a very clear article that shows the difference. This was a person with very little calcium in their plaque. Then you take a look, obviously you can just see from the eye, much more calcium at this point. If you wanna be objective about it, they were objective. They did an optical counter for these. Obviously much more black in this image and much more white or calcium in this image. And here's what happened in terms of events. The calcified people had another event in their group early on, but they stopped. Meanwhile, those people that did not develop calcium continued to have more and more events. So as you see, the people with soft plaque had 29 events total. This is out of about 100. And the people that had that calcified their plaque had four events. Occasionally you can get some inkling from a CT angiogram. You can never get this from a calcium score. The only place that you're reliably going to get it is from a CIMT. And here's where you'll see this. So if you look down under comments, the following values are the largest intermediate thickness test measurements. In other words, discrete black areas, 1.3 millimeters or higher. So as you can see, this is mine. I have a discrete plaque in my right bulb, a discrete plaque. Oh, that's the only place I have one. So you see that H next to that 1.6, what that stands for is heterogeneous. And what that means is a moderate amount of calcium. In other words, it's no longer soft. So in other words, you can see soft or stable calcified plaque on a CIMT. You really cannot see soft plaque on any other type of study. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. And here's the thing, Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs 
We go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.